Today, I'm gonna to teach you how to make my award-winning cucumber and lemon mead recipe. It's incredible, and I love it. So let's get started. This mead was an award-winning best of show mead back in back last year, 2023. I won the New England Regional Homebrew Competition best of show. So out of all the meads that were there, they gave me best of show for a 4% mead. Now, I, I don't know about you, but that's pretty crazy to me. There were a lot of probably big bodied, huge, flavorful meads that were up in competition and they chose my cucumber and lemon mead. And I'm super proud of that. It's really fun. Let me teach you how to make it. It's so easy and it's so good. I wanted it to be a, uh, I'm gonna call it a spa water like mead. When you walk into the spa, well, I, I don't ever go to the spa, but the atypical movies, when you walk in there and you see the big container of water and they have like the cucumbers in it and then maybe some lemon or something. I, I wanted to emulate that. Extremely refreshing, very low ABV. One of these that you can have like two or three pints of and it not affect you at all. This mead does have to be carbonated. I think that's very important to share. It would be terrible at 4.2% and non-carbonated. So there's a way to do it bottle carbonated. Here's a recipe card. And there's a way to do it keg carbonated. Now I, I'll spoil for you, I think it's way better keg carbonated. However, the bottle carb is also very good. So both recipes on the screen, you'll notice a very low amount of honey, a very low amount of cucumbers, and uh, not a lot of other stuff. Maybe a little bit of lime juice, some yeast, of course. So with this one, you're gonna start by mixing together your honey, your water, and your yeast. One pound of honey to one gallon of mead. So it's such a low amount, it's really nice. You're then going to mix all that up. You're gonna pitch your yeast and let that ferment. Take a gravity reading, of course. You're gonna be roughly in the realm of 1.030 to 1.035, so in that 4 to 4.5-ish percent range, but that's kind of where we wanna sit. Fermentation flies with this guy. It might take you about a week, two weeks, roughly. At this point, we've got ourselves a traditional mead that's super low ABV. The yeast nutrient can be added up front, or front loaded as we call it, because this is so low ABV, you don't need to stagger it. So I just threw my yeast and my yeast nutrient all in that beginning and let it go. When it's done fermenting, you'll see the bubbling slow down to a halt and maybe it clear up a little bit. This is where we are going to talk about your bottle carbonation versus your keg carbonation. When it's done fermenting, you'll see the yeast slow down. It might uh, you know, be a little more clear than it was. The bubbling will stop, basically. We're gonna go ahead and start adding some cucumbers. Now, on the recipe card, you saw one pound of cucumber per gallon. That's not a lot. It roughly comes out to like one and a half large cucumbers, I think. You're gonna de-skin them. Here are my rules for cucumber meads. I've done lots of experimentation, and I'll talk about it here more in a second, but no skins. Take those skins off, peel it completely off, chop it up, the Best way to get cucumber flavor in a mead to keep it from being pickly is to actually cold steep the, the uh, cucumbers. So take your vessel. You don't even have to rack it at this point. You could just take the vessel that finished fermenting, put it into a cold chamber. So a fridge, hopefully a fridge if you have one like that, and go ahead and add your cucumbers. The cucumbers are gonna sit in without the skins, chopped up for two or three days. And you can taste it and go, hey, am I getting enough cucumber flavor here or do it, does it need more time? But the cold steep is so important because I did some A-B testing and I literally cold steeped one, like I, I made, I've made three or four versions of this at this point. I separated out at one point and let the cucumber set in a mead at room temp and steep at room temp essentially or, or get their flavor from there at room temp and the other one at the cold temp. I did it side by side. I tasted them. The one that was room temp had a little bit of pickly side. I don't know what it was or why, but it was a little pickly for me. So I noticed that. I also had done some side by side with skins on the cucumbers versus no skins. The skins gave it some earthiness that really detracted from the uh, brightness or the, 
refreshingness of it. So skins come off, cold steep them, cold chamber. Once they're in there, leave them for a couple days. Then this is where we talk about bottle carbonation or kegging. Let's talk about bottle carb. If you are trying to bottle carbonate this, you're gonna need to take rack off of the current cucumber mess. Don't worry about your amount of yeast you're getting in there. It's okay for you to get some yeast. In fact, you want yeast in this racking because we're gonna use them to provide bottle carbonation. So we rack it, get some of the yeast in there. We're gonna let it uh, basically rise back to room temp because in a little bit, we're gonna add some stuff that needs to mix in. Cold temp and mixing won't work well for some of it. Once it rises to the temperature you need, you're gonna rack it again. But this time you're racking into a container, a new container that has some non-fermentable sugar, which is super important here, has to be non-fermentable because we don't want that to be consumed by the yeast. We are gonna use non-fermentable sugar in the form of priming sugar, which will be consumed by the yeast to create a carbonation, essentially. There's a priming sugar calculator. So I'm gonna link to it below. Make sure you know how much to add so you don't add too much. So you add your non-fermentable sugar, your priming sugar, and I added a couple splashes of my lemon juice to taste. It's gonna be decently cloudy at this point. That's okay, you have yeast, you have other things in here. Once you've combined all of those things, you bottle it immediately. That's because it will start to re-ferment on the priming sugar. You want the priming sugar in the bottle to turn into carbonation, bottle carbonation. So you, you bottle it, you cap them, and then you put them away for about two weeks. The kegged version is a little bit different. You're gonna go back to where we were, rack off of the cucumbers, avoiding as much yeast as you can get. You don't wanna have yeast in there. You want it to be real simple. Then go ahead and add your lemon juice, which that's not gonna be fermentable. You can also like use lemon zest if you prefer that, but I just use lemon juice. We're gonna go ahead and stabilize this or pasteurize it. Stabilizing is using potassium sorbate and potassium metabisulfite to halt further fermentation. Pasteurizing is heating the liquid up to halt further fermentation. Either way, kill off the yeast. We're gonna back sweeten with honey. So I have added my lemon juice. I'm gonna back sweeten with a little bit of honey to this thing, mix it up. And if I want it to be super clear, I can wait and you know let it try and clear naturally, or I can just force clear it, or you just do whatever you need to do to keg it. At this point, we're gonna force carbonate. So we move it into a keg. We go ahead and we bump that keg up to 30 PSI for two to three days, and we'll have ourselves a force carbonated brew. I am doing this at a one gallon ratio, as you might have seen that one gallon container. So it's a one gallon keg. If you don't have a full five gallon keg system, that's okay. You can still use a one gallon. So we have ourselves a bottle carbonated. We have ourselves a keg carbonated uh, lemon cucumber mead. It's time for us to see what they taste like. So let's do it. All right, so here is the kegged version. You see me pouring it from specifically my big tap system. Again, you could do this from a one gallon keg like this. And I just didn't end up using, like I have mine in a one gallon keg, but it's hooked up to my other taps. So this one works well. Um, there's a link below if you wanna use that as well. Here is the bottle carbed. Let's see if we have bottle carbonation. Again, sit for about two weeks. The hiss is good. The bubbles are good. Oh yeah, bottle carb. Beautiful, look at that, clear. Obviously one's a little bit different. This is the bottle carb. You can see that it's, it's pretty clear, but it's a different, more straw-like color. And then the keg, because of the honey specifically, is maybe a little more orangey. It's hard to tell if my light's back here. So. Left hand bottle carb, let's see what it tastes like. It's, the nose is bright cucumber, which is good, not pickle. Not that there's anything wrong with the pickle mead, but I just don't want a pickle mead. Yeah, a little bit of lemon. I might've gone light on the lemon. Here we go. Ooh, yeah, very refreshing, lots of cucumber. Um, a little bit of sweetness here, not a ton, just enough to brighten it up some. Definitely light on the lemon. I could have doused it some more. 
but the carbonation gives some lift, some body to, to this thing. Again, we're at one, we're at a 4.3 or 4%, maybe. We started off 1.035 after the primary, 1.000. So again, really light ABV, but still kind of full tasting because of the carbonation. Very crushable, dangerously crushable. I get more lemon as it sets, but it is cucumber water-esque, spa water-esque. I'll switch to the keg carbonated. Bubbles flowing at the bottom there. The nose is different. It's got more sweetness, more richness from the honey. Masking a little bit of that um, cucumber. That's okay though. Let's taste it. Oh yeah. Much more mead like. <laughs> I mean, it's got more honey. It's got the same like rich, nice, not rich, light cucumbery taste as the bottle carb, but their honey there lifts up the brew. Carbonation there is nice. It's got a little more lemon. I think I doused with more lemon juice than this one, but the honey there is really nice and sweet and preserving of this character. This is like so crushable. It's dangerously crushable because it's it just feels light and, and nice. Like spa water, no pickle, no pickle. That was my big fear. And one thing I experienced with making these multiple iterations of this cucumber mead, the non-cold steeping of the cucumbers, meaning at room temp, steeping, putting into the brew, led to a little bit of a pickle taste, and I did not want the pickle side. So cold steeping is the way to go, in my experience. This recipe is so good. Best of show worthy. I am super proud of this. I was shocked when I won this because I threw this bad boy in as a Hail Mary into that competition. Just as a fun, let's see what kind of feedback I'll get. Came back with the best of show and they loved it. I think you'll love it too. It's so stinking easy and it's cheap. One pound of honey, one pound of cucumbers, one and a half cucumbers, that's like a dollar, a dollar fifty. Your yeast is probably the most expensive part of this whole brew. Maybe the honey, I don't really know. I hope you'll try it. You could of course riff on it. Let's say you don't want it to be 4.2%, then make it bigger, add more honey. You'll probably have to add more cucumber to it. Maybe add some lime juice instead of lemon. Whatever you do, I hope you'll try it. You'll maybe pair some different things. Just give it a shot. Let me know what you think. And if you do it, let me know. I would love to hear some experiences of people trying the brews and seeing how it works for them. And if you submit it to a competition, let me know. Cause again, I'm very curious to see how it does at a comp. This has been my cucumber and lemon mead. I'm super proud of it. Proud of my best of show from it. And I look forward to seeing how you riff on it or maybe how you create it yourself. There's some links below to things like a one gallon keg, equipment, stuff like that. All of those links go to support the channel and I hope you'll support the channel because uh, this is a, not a cheap hobby. This is a cheap mead, but not a cheap hobby. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Hit subscribe and cheers.